Why won't email die? We've reached a new milestone, everybody. There are now 4 billion people who use email on this planet, and they collectively send about 300 billion of them every single day. And those numbers keep rising. And this is despite some of the biggest tech companies in the world coming up with products that are better and more secure than email, which, by the way, dates back to before the World Wide Web itself. So, I'm Nate Langson, and I think I know the answer. Let's examine the negative stuff first. Email is stressful. Inboxes bulge with thousands of unread messages, phishing attempts and spam, alongside important communication. Email is not usually stored encrypted on a mail server, and often not even in transit between them, which means it's basically the same as writing something important on the back of a postcard. It's super easy to accidentally send something to your entire address book, and there's very little you can do about it to claw it all back in a way that works across everybody's inbox. Plus, how many times have we sent a reply to a group email only for someone else to reply in the meantime, meaning that you then have two entirely different threads for the same conversation? These are just some of the reasons why email is basically terrible. But for the same reason that the world's most popular password every year is also the least secure possible, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, by the way, it all comes down to the three C's. Convenience, cost, and compatibility. Let's do a fun test. Hold out your fists and raise a thumb or a finger for every one of the following you've done in the last month. Being asked for an email address when signing up to something. Having to click a link in your email to confirm that account. Sent something to yourself. Subscribe to a newsletter. Read a message from your boss to your whole team. Included several people on CC in reply. Confirm a request to change a password. Sent a resume or CV for a new job. Received a suspicious activity alert. Search for something old like a delivery order or receipt. Now I'm guessing most of you have at least a whole hand of fingers outstretched and possibly a second hand as well. These are some of the reasons why email is so pervasive. No matter where you are in the world, email broadly works the same, whether you're using a device from the 90s or the latest iPhone or Android. And much like SMS on phones, it's not a technology confined just to the wealthy. People in some of the poorest countries in the world use email and it means that they're technically as accessible as someone from the US or Britain or China, say. Then there's the commercial aspect to all this. No one really owns the technology underneath email, which means enterprises can collectively deploy it freely to hundreds of millions of employees, knowing that it's compatible with the inboxes of hundreds of millions of other employees somewhere else in the world. With more than 100 trillion emails now being sent every year and growing, it's big business for some of the companies that can store it and sort it. Microsoft's Office 365 product, which incorporates email, generates billions of dollars every year. And Google's Gmail, while free to its users, supports the company's massive ad business. Companies are incentivized to keep email as part of their business because it's universally accepted. It's like a paper letter. So the opportunity now is how do you augment it with something that's faster, more flexible, more secure, or just something more proprietary that you can control? Here's Robert Viz, CEO of MessageBird. I would agree with that statement. Email needs to die, but in order for that to happen, the only way for that to happen is to actually move over to messaging channels. Without, without that, there just isn't an alternative um, that does the job as well as email. Even though we all think email doesn't do the job, it is the only thing we have. And like the only way for me to interact with the business is if something goes wrong is to send them an email. And, and that then goes into like the whole notion of like you get long responses, you, you know, it takes a day or two or a week to sort of respond back. I mean, this is the whole notion that we're trying to prove like texting with the business is way more efficient. If you can just text, hey, my order was wrong, send a picture and you're on your way. Try having that exact same experience, but then on email, it's just really friggin' hard. But I think email has a specific purpose and we need to use it for that purpose, but not use it for purposes that are better off actually in a short messaging channel. I think if you live in more in that hybrid world between these channels, I think that's a great way for consumers to interact with the business um, and not make have so much friction as they do today with email. So email is here to stay, hurrah, one and all. You can let me know your thoughts on email's best and worst qualities by maybe talking to me on social media. Don't send an email. I've been Nate Langson, technically speaking, for Quick Take in London.